Good morning, Nystrom. Happy Friday to you. So, for those of you who have been back in person, we're not going to see you for a little while. It was amazing to have you back in person. Like I said yesterday, look forward to having more people back. And I promised you that I would miss somebody, and I did. Miss Schultz, I'm sorry. Thank you for all you've done. And I'm not sure, I know I had her in the scroll, but I'm not sure if I mentioned Miss Tolentino's name as well. So thank you to both of you as well. Sorry to leave you out of yesterday's announcements. All right, for those of you who were in person at the end of yesterday, you may have heard a loud boom. Like, what was that? It was right near the end of the school day. It was a fireworks, or firework, fireworks. And today we're gonna to learn a little bit more about fireworks because we're not that far away from the 4th of July. And here in Oakland, at nighttime, even now, a month away from the 4th of July, we hear a lot of fireworks. So it got me thinking, how did they work? How do they time it so it goes up and explodes at the right moment? And how do you do it safely? And how do they make these things so colorful? All these things. And it turns out there's a ton of science behind fireworks and how they work. So let's check out this little video learning about fireworks. Everyone loves fireworks, except for small children and dogs. But what exactly goes into the making of these explosive and beautiful balls of fire? Fireworks are a lot more than balls of explosive powder with a fuse. They are perfectly constructed chemical masterpieces used in celebrations all over the world. First, let's take a look at how pyrotechnicians create the various colors of fireworks. When a firework explodes, it essentially is a chain reaction of chemical reactions that result in different shapes and colors in the sky. As you likely expected, the explosion creates heat that starts the burning of different chemicals packed within the shell. To make different colors, pyrotechnicians have to use different chemical compounds, some more dangerous than others. These compounds are typically metal salts, which burn specific colors. Compounds based on sodium will burn different shades of yellow or orange. Copper or barium salts will burn green or blue, and calcium or strontium make red shades. Combining these compounds in different layouts within the projectile will create different shapes. For example, if you wanted to create a smiley face firework that had a yellow circle and blue eyes and a mouth, starting from the inside you would pack the fuse, then the primer charge, we'll get to this in a second, then you'd lay out the balls of barium in a smiley face, blue, then surround the perimeter of the shell with sodium balls to make the outer ring. All of this will be packed into a rigid spherical shell and launched into the air. Now that we understand the chemical reactions behind a firework, let's figure out how they are propelled and the explosions are initiated. There are four main parts that help to set off the firework. The stick, the fuse, the charge, and the effect. The stick is essentially that, a long stick that protrudes out of the end of the firework to make sure it shoots in the right direction. This helps show organizers arrange the fireworks and make sure the display goes according to plan. It also means that if you launch one yourself, you hopefully won't fire it through your neighbor's window. The fuse is what is set off by the initial lighting of the firework. Fuses can be as simple as a piece of paper or as complex as electrically timed wires. Focusing in on the more complex electrically timed fuses, these are the kinds that are used in professional shows. This allows a whole array of fireworks to be set off from one central computer sending signals to the individual fuses. These fuses burn for a predetermined amount of time then set off the main charge that launches the firework into the air. The fuse continues to burn while the charge is being expelled to eventually trigger the explosion of the shell which produces the effect of the firework. The charge is basically a rocket that launches the entire shell into the air. It can accelerate shells to speeds greater than 300 miles per hour to reach altitudes above 1,000 feet. Charges are typically made through a mixture of gunpowder and other minute chemicals. For fireworks that have extravagant tails as they are launched in the air, balls of chemicals mentioned before can be laced into the charge to create this effect. The effect of a firework is the final destructive aspect, and it's by far the most important. 
A firework without an effect is just a boring old weird shaped rocket. The effect part of the firework contains the chemicals mentioned before, the end of the fuse, and a primer to start the explosion. The effect is inside the main part of the shell, often called the head. The head is packed with a specific chemical design and explosives to cause the firework to go off. As the fuse burns through the charge, it sets off a primer that then ignites the main shell charge to explode the firework, starting the colorful chemical reactions. The engineering behind fireworks is far more complex and dangerous than the processes make it seem. Only skilled pyrotechnicians can safely create fireworks of the magnitude needed to be impressive. While these fun, festive devices may seem like toys, they are dangerous explosives that, when used in the right way, can be fun displays of patriotism, celebration, and more. Yikes. Just remember that while fireworks are beautiful to look at from afar, very dangerous, and can even be a little scary up close. So, very interesting, lots of science behind them, but eek, would want to play with them myself. Anyway, yesterday's riddle. I got so many questions yesterday at school. What's the answer to the riddle? How many triangles are there? Well, the answer is 35. But if you remember, I said, show me your work. I didn't get anybody that showed me their work. So I would still love to see it, especially from some sixth graders. We did get two right guesses, Miss Ibby Lola and Miss B. Congratulations, you both guessed 35. Now your job is to show the rest of us how you got there. Hopefully we can share that early next week. That is it for today. Remember those four Bs. Be responsible, be respectful, be safe, and be honest. Have a great day or not. The choice is yours.